I wanted to ask first uh, about the kind of genesis of the project, whether it was something that you've been wanting to make for a long time or whether it was something that just came across your desk or how it could kind of come about. I just reached up and plucked this book off a bookshelf about three oh, really? years ago and I thought I'll never make a film of this because they've already made a film. Um, and I didn't know anything about it. It was my mother's copy of the book. Uh, I remember her thinking highly of Daphne du Maurier, which didn't necessarily make me think it was something that I was going to be fascinated by. And I thought Daphne du Maurier was, was uh, sort of middle brow, a book you, you know, used to buy at airports or railway stations, uh, which indeed is true. She was an enormously popular writer um, from the 1930s onwards. But that's not the whole story. I mean, she's also really fantastic sort of psychological writer of suspense drama. And this book absolutely riveted me from page one. And by the end of the book, I figured I'd like to try and um, you know, do a remake. I, I've never seen the, the original film with Olivia de Havilland and Richard Maybe Burton. Um, and I figured maybe I'd, I'd leave that pleasure until after I'd finished this film. Um, and we approached Fox. Fox owned the rights. They bought the, bought the novel in 1950, and I think they own it forever now. So the only way of making the film would be if Fox were interested in remaking the property, and, and they were, and here we are. I was speaking to, obviously speaking to some of the guys who are in your wonderful cast, and, and a lot of them are saying, what, us as critics and obviously audiences so far, that it's so unpredictable and that everyone had takes their own kind of story away from it as to what happened or whether she did or didn't. Yeah. Do. It must have been great to be in a f with a film that's having so much talk about it already as to, you know, the what and the how, and it's because it's such an unpredictable story. Yeah, I think, I think it's, it operates in an odd way, this film. I mean, most films <coughs> deliver a, an ending, don't they? They deliver a really decisive ending, and that's satisfying. And our brains are, are kind of geared to receive stories like that. Stories, particularly in films, have a beginning, a middle, and an end. And this uh, doesn't have an end in a conventional way. It has an end in the, in the sense that somebody dies, but it doesn't have an end in that uh, we go, ah, oh, that's what happened. Um, and that's, I was worried that that would be frustrating to audiences. Um, I was worried that they would want to know, they would want uh, that horrible word, closure, on the whole thing. But, I, but uh, you know, we've done enough uh, tests with the film to know that people don't need that or want that, and that they're, they're, they're happy with this sort of alternative, which is something to go off and argue about in the pub. Yeah, that's what it's been so far. Yeah. Um, with the title, obviously, with Rachel in the title, was Rachel Rice someone that you wanted straight away? Because I know you yeah. worked with uh, that's her the only husband reason I passed her, many, know, many years ago. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I thought of her uh, very early on. I mean, she's super, super, duper casting for it. She's, she's the right age. I mean, in the book, she's only 35, Rachel, but I thought it was more interesting to make her older so that it, there's more of a sense of wrongness in what's going on between him and his stepmom basically um, she has got the right coloring in that she's uh, in the book this, this darkness is a very important feature of Rachel um, she feels like she's an exotic being from another world in the book she's from Italy or half Italian um, but most importantly, she's an uh, immeasurably gifted actress who also has this sort of vapour of mystery surrounding her. She can withhold and she can, sh there's something hidden in a, in a way that's really compelling about her, like the sort of Mona Lisa smile. Um, so she's, it's, it's a killer role for her, literally. I mean, she's, yeah. <laughs> she's, she nails it, really nails it. Her kind so of impressed. sparring match with Sam is, is, is fantastic. I mean, it's really centered to the, to the story. Was yeah. he, again, someone that you wanted from the beginning, or was he kind of part of a process? I, I, sort, of, I sort of found him. I, I, as, as you get older, you lose touch with, you know, the young actors who are, who are emerging. So I had to do a bit of work to catch up with all the, all the promising young uh, British leading actors that we've now happily got in this country. So I watched quite a lot of uh, stuff, and I met quite a few people, and then I watched a film called The Riot Club, mm. and I was very taken with him in that, and met him, and he did a test, and um, I, I was really excited about the prospect of him doing the, doing the part. It's fantastic, as yeah. they both are. Uh, thank you so much for your time. It's been an absolute okay, pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so nice much. To meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Yeah.